So Connor Bedard is probably going to end up winning the Calder Trophy, which is awarded to the NHL's best rookie for that season. Obviously, the rookie race isn't really that much of a race. It's him and Brock Faber, but he's pretty clear of Faber, in my opinion. Bedsy was obviously the most hyped up prospect since McDavid in 2015, and he's having a great rookie season, almost point per game. But what if he played in 2007, near the dead puck era, where scoring was at an all-time low, the game was a lot more physical, players were much different play style-wise, just overall competing against a brand new crop of players, NHL superstars that have now obviously retired as time has passed. How good would he do? Would he be as good, if not better, than he is today? I don't have those answers, but let's go ahead and find out as I am going to be putting Connor Bedard in 2007 to see how good he would be in that age NHL. So if we take a look at the Blackhawks roster here in 2007, Bedard is going to be playing alongside a very young Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane, who are an 87 and 88 apiece. Obviously, Bedard's down at an 83, but he's only 18 years old, so he's definitely going to grow. Patrick Sharp's up there at an 86. Marty Havlat is on the team as well, 88 overall. So this is a much better roster than what currently Bedard has in real life. Obviously, eventually, Bedsy will slot up to the first line. I don't know if I'll move Jonathan Taves to the wing or slot him down at the second line center position, as he is going to be 35, 36, and 37 years old. So he's not really going to grow much. Now, on defense, we have Duncan Keith and Brent Seabrook. Two absolute Chicago legends. 86 overall apiece for both of them. Dustin Bufflin is on the roster. He's an 85. Man, do I ever miss Big Buff. He had the greatest hits I've ever seen. He literally just was out there an absolute tank and he bodied basically everybody on the ice. Now for you youngins who have not seen Dustin Bufflin play, please go on YouTube right now. Well, actually, you're on YouTube watching this video, but search up Dustin Bufflin hits. And in goal, we have Nikolai Habibulin at an 86 overall as our starter in Corey Crawford as our backup, 83 overall for him. But for some reason, it says he's 38 years old, but this dude who created this roster, I believe Corey Crawford is a created player, so I don't know why he would put him at 38 years old. Regardless, does not matter. This is the Blackhawks roster in 2007. So we are going to basically go ahead and simulate, I'd say, five to six seasons before everybody starts trailing off. We are going to see how good Connor Bedard can do in this era. This brand of hockey was a lot more physical, so let's see if Connor Bedard can survive. So at the end of our very first season, we're actually going to end up missing the playoffs, finishing second last in the Central. As we ended up going 32, 40, and 10, only 74 points. Dallas, Colorado, and Minnesota made it in our division. If we take a look at the entire NHL, the Pittsburgh Penguins were the best team, and that is not surprising whatsoever, as they have a prime Crosby and Malkin on the roster. San Jose was good. The Red Wings were up there. New Jersey is always going to be dangerous, as well as the Minnesota Wild. Now at the bottom, we have the New York Islanders, who don't have a really good team. I do believe John Tavares. Actually, no, John Tavares was drafted in 09, so he's not even here on the team. Seattle, we already know, and wasn't even a franchise at the moment. Patrick Kane is going to go ahead and lead our team in scoring with 71 points. Only 15 goals, so not a great season by Patty Kane. Jonathan Taves did have 36 goals and 68 points. Patrick Sharp had 66. Marty Havlat had 55. Lang was up there. Bedard had a very bad rookie season, especially to his standards. Only 19 goals and 44 points in 82 games. I guess the physical era of 2007 is really getting to him. He was also minus 19. I mean, basically our whole team was minuses outside of Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves. Happy Bullen is going to go 28, 35, and 10. One shutout and not really the greatest stats overall. We might have to pick up a goalie over our tenure here in Chicago if we want to compete for a Stanley Cup. Alexander Ovechkin is going to lead the NHL in goals with 64 and points with 104, followed by Paul Stastny's 94. Forsberg also had 94. Hajduk was up there with 92. Kovalev, 92. Crosby had a very good season at 90 points and 28 goals. Ray Whitney had a great season. Alexander Semin. Now, if we take a look at the goal side, other than Ovi, Milan Hajduk is going to score 46 goals, followed by Kovalchuk's 42. Danny Heatley had 40, so there's going to be no 50 in 07 this season. Kovalev was up there. Jonathan Taves, I believe, would be very young. He might actually be a rookie this season. Actually, no. If Patrick Kane's on the roster, he's not a rookie, but he had a very good year at 36 goals. Nicholas Backstrom is going to lead all goalies and wins with 44. And for shutouts, it's going to go to Thomas Vokun and Mark andre Fleury tying at seven apiece. And the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to go on and win the Stanley Cup here in year number one as they beat Minnesota in game seven of the Stanley Cup finals. This literally is so unbelievable. You cannot even imagine. 
Toronto was an absolute terrible franchise back in the 2000s. Now for the playoffs, Paul Correa is going to lead in scoring with 27 points, followed by Daniel Briere, who had 10 goals and 25 points. Andrew Poff was up there. Mike Richards had a good season. Paul Stastny is going to take on the Ted Lindsay and the Hart Trophy, while the Art Ross and Maurice Richard will go to Ovi. The Norris will go to Sergey Gonchar, the Con Smythe to Paul Correa. Also, Connor Bedard is going to win the Calder Trophy, so at least he still has that to his resume. J.S. Shiger is going to win the Vesna, and the Selkie will end up going to Brad Richards of the Dallas Stars. As we move along to season number two, hopefully Bedard can grow and get up to like an 87, 88 overall, and we can be a much better team next season, as we were not very good this year, but hopefully the only way to go is up. And luckily, Connor Bedard now has grown to a 90 overall. Wait a minute, why do we have two Bedards on the roster? One is 90, actually, they're both 19 years old. We have duplicate Connor Bedards. What is going on with this roster? I'm definitely going to have to scratch one of these players. Okay, so one of the Connor Bedards played in the NHL. The one that's an 88 overall we saw last season played. He had 44 points. And the other one played in the WHL and somehow has grown to a higher overall than actually playing in the NHL from the WHL. I know it's confusing. 49 goals, 94 points. But that doesn't even make sense. I Like, why would he grow to a higher overall while playing in the WHL compared to if he actually started in the NHL last season? So I'm going to have to scratch this 90 overall Bedard. As the NHL is not big enough for two Bedsies to exist. So Bedard now is an 88 overall alongside Patrick Kane and Patrick Sharp. Jonathan Taves, you're going to play the second line center role, buddy. Our top six looks a little bit better defensively. We don't really have any more pickups. Some reason, I don't even know why, but Kevin Korchinski is here. And in goal, we are still rocking with Nikolai Habibulin. So... Hopefully we can improve off of last season. Bedard have a great year. Also, Connor Bedard, I I'm sorry. Uh, where is Jonathan Taves at? I don't even care. Bedard, you are now the captain. Actually, no, this Bedard is now the captain of the Chicago Blackhawks. Jonathan Taves, you can get an A and Patrick Kane as well as you guys, of course, are Chicago legends. I literally have no idea how that happened. This roster sometimes can be a little bit goofy considering it is very tough to put a 2007 NHL roster in the current NHL, and it would take a lot of work as well, so I'm not going to flame the guy who did it. I mean, I could never do this, honestly. I would lose my mind trying to do this. You know, at the end of the second season, Chicago is actually going to improve to a playoff spot, going 43, 36, and 3, 89 points, fourth in the Central behind the Arizona Coyotes of all teams, Dallas and Minnesota. It was so hilarious how Arizona literally is not going to be a franchise anymore. Also, I will be doing a Utah Coyotes rebuild video, some type of thing like that. I will simulate until they win a Stanley Cup. Stay tuned for that. That's coming very soon. The Pittsburgh Penguins were the best team in the NHL with 51 wins, followed by the Devils. Buffalo was up there, Minnesota and Philly. Connor Bedard is going to have a much improved second season. 29 goals and 73 points in 82 games, followed by Patrick Kane, who had 69. Patrick Sharp had 65, also a 30 goal season. Marty Havlett was good. Jonathan Taves took a slight step back, honestly. Went from 36 goals goals to 20 and only 52 points. Happy Bullen's going to go 33, 26, and 2. Five shutouts is a lot, actually, and really not the greatest stats, but I mean, I can't complain about five shutouts in a single season. Derek Roy and Ilya Kovalchuk are going to tie for the lead in scoring with 94 points. Ilya Kovalchuk is going to win the Art Ross, I believe, since he did end up having more goals. Marion Hosa had 92. Nicholas Backstrom was up there. Mike Richards had 90. Marion Gabrick, 90. Pominville had 90 as well. If we take a look at the goal side... Kovalchuk is going to lead with 47. Semin had 43. Rick Nash was up there with 43. Jerome McGinla had 41. Hosa 41. Ovi took a slight step back himself. Only 40 goals after scoring what was it, 64 last season. Nicholas Backstrom again is going to lead in wins this time with 44. And for shutouts, it's going to go to Evgeny Nabokov and Martin Brodeur as they would each end up tying at six apiece. And in the first round of the playoffs, we are up against the Calgary Flames who didn't have the greatest round roster in 07, but I'm not exactly too confident that we're going to have a deep playoff run here. And somehow, some way, the Chicago Blackhawks have actually made the Stanley Cup Finals. And funny enough, we're up against the Philadelphia Flyers, who in 2010, we actually ended up beating Patrick Kane, of course, at the OT Hero. And we're making it now in, I believe, 2009, so one season prior, which kind of lines up to the current timeline. But let's see if Connor Bedard can go on and win a Stanley Cup in only his second season in the NHL. And we have 
have actually done it. Somehow the Chicago Blackhawks are going to go on and defeat the Philadelphia Flyers in five games in the finals as Bedard is going to go on and win his very first Stanley Cup in his NHL career in only his second season. Also, this is the first time putting a player back in 2007 that we're actually going to go on and win a Stanley Cup. I did with Matthews. And I believe I did with Crosby as well. Both times we did not win a single cup as Robert Lang is going to win the con Smythe. Four goals and 21 points for him. Definitely well deserved. But finally, we're having some playoff success here in 2007. A much tougher era, at least in NHL 24. As there it is, the Stanley Cup being raised one year earlier in 2009 to the Chicago Blackhawks. As again, history repeats itself. They beat the Flyers in the Stanley Cup Finals. Here's our captain, Mr. Bedsy, baby and only his second season is going to be able to raise a Stanley Cup for the first time in his career as the Chicago Blackhawks are Stanley Cup champions. Now for the playoffs, Patrick Sharp and Robert Lang are both going to tie at 21 points. I don't know why Patrick Sharp did not win the con Smythe. He had more goals and the same amount of points. Havlat had 18, Patrick Kane 17, Andrew Ladd 14. Bedard was down there, only 6 goals and 12 points. Derek Roy is going to take home the Ted Lindsay and Hart Trophy. All the Art Ross and Maurice Richard will go to Kovalchuk. The Norris again to Sergei Gonchar. Robert Lang's going to win the con Smythe. Martin Brodeur, the Vesna, and the Selkie will go to Anze Kobitar. As we literally have accomplished our goal we will still simulate at least three more seasons so we can get up to year number five and we are going to find out how many stanley cups Connor bedard and the chicago blackhawks can win here in the simulation as so far we're doing very good i mean we got one maybe we can get one more or maybe two more who knows i don't have those answers but we are definitely going to be finding out here now Connor bedard is up to a 93 overall the best player on the blackhawks alongside only an 85 patrick kane and 84 overall jonathan taves as they are technically 37 and 35 years old, 36 years old. So he's not getting any better either defensively. Duncan Keith has gotten worse. Korchinski actually has rose to an 86 overall. And in goal, we are still rocking with an 86 heavy Bulin. So we won the Stanley Cup last season. The only way to go is up action all the way to. So it cannot get any better than last season. We won the Stanley Cup. So moving along, the Chicago Blackhawks are going to have another great regular season as we go 45, 27, and 10. 100 points on the season. Season. We would end up finishing second in the Central, only behind the St. Louis Blues, and for the entire NHL, we were the fifth best team behind Edmonton, St. Louis, Vancouver, and Anaheim, as Anaheim and Vancouver both won 52 games on the season, so they are very dangerous. Also, both Western Conference teams, ever the top five is entire, entirely Western Conference teams, so the West is stacked. Connor Bedard is finally going to break out 52 goals and 110 points leading our team, followed by Jonathan Taves who had 31 goals and 81 points. Patrick Kane had 70. Patrick Sharp 69. Also had a 34 goal season. Marty Havlat had 64. Andrew Ladd who had an okay season. I mean it was a damn near 30 goal season as well. Dustin by Fuglin is only going to have 14 goals and 34 points but he's not there or he's not being paid to put up points. Abby Bullen went 38, 23, and 6. Three shutouts, a 9-11 save percentage, and a 281 GAA. Now, if we take a look at the entire NHL, Bedsy is going to end up leading in goals with 52 and points with 110. Followed by Mike Richards and Matt Sundin, who both had 101. Andrew Poff had 99. Kovalchuk was up there. Tyler Bertuzzi had 94 points. Now, for goals, Ovi's going to come in second place with 49. Mike Richards was up there 45. Chris Kunin had 41 now on the Anaheim Ducks instead of Pittsburgh. Sundin had a pretty good season himself. No Crosby. He's been very quiet this simulation. J.S. Shiger is going to lead in wins with 45 and for shutouts, it's going to go to Martin Brodeur who was actually tied with two current goalies that should not even be in the simulation right now. And in the first round, we are going to end up playing the Nashville Predators who are a pretty okay team at the moment. Not great but not terrible either. And unfortunately we would end up losing to the Calgary Flames in the second round in five games as they went on and actually won the Stanley Cup, sweeping the Red Wings in the finals. Now for the playoffs, Marty Havlat is going to lead our team in scoring. He had 15 points. Patrick Sharp had 13. Andrew Ladd, 10. And Bedard, again, hasn't really been producing the playoffs that well. I mean, four goals and 10 points in 12 games 
at a 95 overall is really not cutting it. He's gonna have to do better than that if we want to win another Stanley Cup before the video ends. Mike Richards is gonna take home the Ted Lindsay and Hart Trophy, while Bedard is gonna win the Art Ross and Maurice Richard. The Norris will actually go to Schneider. Tangay is gonna win the Con Smythe. The Vesna will go to Martin Brodeur, and the Selkie Trophy will go to Nicholas Backstrom of the Washington Capitals. Shout out to Backstrom, man. One of the best passers of his generation, and now he has a Selkie Trophy. So, Bedsy now is up to a 95 overall. He might honestly be the highest rated player in the entire game at the moment. He's 21 years old. Fresh off of his best season so far, 52 goals and 110 points, obviously. Now, the bad news is we no longer have Patrick Kane on the roster. I don't know if he retired or just left in the offseason. We still have Jonathan Taves, who will be playing on the first line. We also picked up Joe Pavelski at an 84 overall, so our team still is looking pretty decent, I'd say. Defensively, we're not really that great. And in goal, still rocking with Javi Bulin, who is still an 86 overall. Doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. But honestly, I'm a little bit pissed that we do not have uh, Patrick Kane anymore on the team. He's uh, the heart and soul of the Chicago Blackhawks. One of the best players, uh, probably better than Jonathan Taves all time, I'd say, in my opinion. Jonathan Taves doesn't really have the longevity that Patrick Kane has. Now, at the end of season number four, Chicago is going to finish at the top of the Central, going 48, 23, and 11, which was good enough for 107 points. Obviously, the best in their division. Now, for the entire NHL, we were top five again at five. Toronto was the best team in the NHL, winning 53 games, followed by Philly, Florida, and Anaheim. And of course, yours truly, the Chicago Blackhawks. Bedard is actually going to take a slight step back from last season. 35 goals and 88 points, followed by Jonathan Taves, who had 82. Havlat had 81. Sharp, 78. Joe Pavelski had a pretty good season at 24 goals and 69 points. Abby Bullen was actually a very good, a 919 save percentage, also having five shutouts on the season. If we take a look at the entire NHL, Matt Sundin is going to lead in points with 100, and nobody else is going to hit the century mark which is a typical 2007 simulated season as the scoring was not as high as it is today. Derek Pinot is going to lead in goals with 58, followed by Chistoff, who had 56, Aguinla had 51, Arne 46, and Sundin 43. As the Blackhawks again are going to play the Flames in the very first round of the playoffs. And again, Calgary is going to end up beating us, but this time in the first round in six games. As the St. Louis Blues go on and dominate the Penguins in the finals in five games. I mean, we didn't really have much of a playoff run. Patrick Sharp was, I guess, our best player. Six points in six games. As well as Jonathan Taves, he had the same exact stat line. Bedard had two goals and three assists for five points so we were not very good overall in the playoffs Sundin is going to take home the Ted Lindsay Art Ross and Hart Trophy while Pino is going to win the Maurice Richard the Norris to Palinka or Palika, my bad. The Consumites will go to Boys. The Vesna to Labor. Oh, I cannot pronounce that name. I'm literally not even going to try. The Selkie will end up going to Matt Sundin. So, a hell of a season for him. And all right. So, the first two seasons honestly didn't go great. I mean, the second season we did win the Stanley Cup. But since then, we've kind of choked in the playoffs. We have one more year to go. We will simulate one final season to see if Connor Bedard can take home another Stanley Cup before he wraps up his journey here in 2007. And during during the dead puck era, essentially, as he's pretty much accomplished more than uh, Matthews or Crosby did in the same exact era. Now, for the final season, Connor Bedard is still going to be a 95 overall. We pretty much have the same exact team as the last two seasons. Not much has really changed offensively, defensively. Happy Bullen's actually up to an 89 now. I mean, he did have a very good season last year, so I'm not too surprised at that. So, now in the final season, the Blackhawks are going to end up finishing third in our division as we went 40. 26, 28, and 9, 100 points. Again, another good regular season. Let's take a look at the entire NHL. Le Montreal, the Canadiens were the best team in the league with 54 wins. Followed by the St. Louis Blues. Winnipeg was good. Chicago, top four, not bad. Anaheim was the fifth best team in the NHL. Connor Bedard is going to have his best season of the video. 56 goals and 122 points. Yeah, it's safe to say he's officially a superstar in this era. Followed by Patrick Sharp, who had 80 87, Jonathan Taves at 83, Robert Lang 77. Take a look at Javi Bulin here. He had an okay season, not really the greatest, especially compared to his standards, which he has been pretty decent throughout this video. I'm not even going to lie. He simulates a lot better than most goalies I have. Bedsy will end up finishing with the most points at 122, followed by Keith 
Kachuk, who had 106, Chistov had 105, and Cody Glass had 100. Now, on the goal side, Chistov is going to lead with 66. I could honestly be absolutely butchering that guy's name. Followed by Derek Pinot, who had 64, Bedard had 56, and Keith Kachuk, 47. And we got the Winnipeg Jets in round number one of the playoffs. And unfortunately, we would end up losing in game seven of round number two to the St. Louis Blues as the Anaheim Ducks will go on and win the Stanley Cup, beating Montreal in game seven of the finals. Bedard is going to take home the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. The Norris will go to Sergei Gonchar, the Con Smythe, somehow to Leo Carlson. What the hell? Hardy Garon is going to win the Vesna, and the Selkie Trophy is going to go to Philip Deneau, of all people. That is why I only simulate five years in this era with this roster. And that is going to do it for this video, boys. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications so I don't miss a single live stream or video that I put out. Also, merch is live. We officially launched our website. The link is in the description. Go check it out. We have hoodies and t-shirts that are very nice looking. In my opinion, I rock one myself. And there you go, boys. We have done it. I have put Connor Bedard in 2007. And honestly, he did very good. He struggled very early on, obviously, being a small 18-year-old kid, but he grew into an absolute superstar. He also ended up winning a Stanley Cup in only his second season, so that's more than Matthews or Crosby could do in this era. Let me know what player I should put next in 2007. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, don't be silly. Wrap your willy.